Hi, welcome to my channel. My name is Rachel. That is the R in the RK Stumbling Bear, and I am a reader and a writer. And welcome back to week 18. And we're just gonna jump into it because it's been a busy, long, tiring week, but nothing went wrong, nothing went beautifully right. Actually, one second. So I was at my part-time job last night and I was given this card and it really made my day. So doing nice things for people, even if they're complete strangers, really can have an impact on how someone is feeling. So that is your fun message before the wrap-up. Getting into the book wrap-up, I finished one book this week. And it wasn't one that I was planning on reading at all, but it happened. And that was First Comes Scandal by Julia Quinn. This finishes the prequel Bridgerton Quartet and follows Georgiana Bridgerton, who is the younger sister of Edmund, husband of Violet. It starts off where her love interest is one of the brothers for like the house that's three miles away. And He's summoned home by his father, who is her godfather, to ask him to marry her because she was kidnapped and now her reputation has been ruined. And this is a friends to lovers romance because they've known each other for years and they haven't thought of each other in that way because they've just always been together, been around each other, and they get along. There, there's no animosity. They get along with each other and they, they check in and be like, oh, hey, what are you doing? So that's why I say it's a friends to lovers. It really seemed like Georgiana was coming into her own and then the book like abruptly ends. So that's my only criticism is the book is too short. There should have been more. Like you, we should have gotten to see a full blossoming of Georgiana. And basically after they tell each other that they love each other, the book ends. And I'm like, but it, no, it, it's just because you love someone doesn't mean that there's no trouble or strife. It just means you're more motivated to work with one another to figure things out. That finishes that quartet. And then I started Fear by Gabriel Chevalier this week. This is a World War I fiction written by someone who was in World War I. So the main character is not the actual the author. It has The main character has a different name. And it's kind of... I'm finding it more like... It, it started off kind of poignant of this is how war seems to happen to society, a society that is not expecting it. And now we've gotten to where they're, you know, he's a soldier, he's there, and it's more tongue in cheek, poking at the holes and flaws of the military, but at the same time, showing a little bit of what it actually is like to be a soldier. Chapters aren't really that long. I just haven't felt in the mood to pick it up all the time. And I think it's more me, like I said, I was really tired this week. So when I was reading it, I, I was hooked. I was in it. It was just picking anything up to read. I also continued working on The Unbroken by C.L. Clark, a third of the way through. And this is really fast paced when you're reading it, same as Fear. Getting to know Torrain and Luca, like C.L. Clark has really, really great character work. Not just for the two main characters, but for all of them. I am really enjoying this, and I hope to make way more progress on this this weekend as my schedule is lighter. I'm, I'm going to be continuing reading these. If I finish these, then I have some options. When I finish Fear, one of the two books that I'll be picking up is Lady Shatterley's Lover or Native Son. And if I finish The Unbroken, then I'm going to pick up Starsight, which is my buzzword prompt for both my sci-fi and my normal, because I didn't have a direction on my shelf already. And Starsight is a directional term for navigating by the stars when you're on a boat. I'm very excited to get to book two in this series. I really enjoyed the first one. But again, that is only if I finish The Unbroken. So I have plans. I have things that I want to read. It all depends on how fast I read. Speaking of how fast I read, 
it could also have something to do with I read 19 things in April, which normally April is a much smaller month. So I was kind of surprised. I read eight novels. I read three manga. I read one short story anthology. I read four novelettes and I read three novellas. So I had a great reading month in April and I did read a 2022 new release and that was the short story anthology Reclaim the Stars for my Goodreads currently reading. I had started the month at 159 and I ended at 160 because I added a book to it and I don't remember the book off the top of my head but again how I use my currently reading list is this is a book that I want to go back and read or finish so that's why it's there is to make me see it more. For my physical TBR, I started at 71 and I ended at 71 because I did not read anything for my physical TBR because I never got to Little Women. For my series, I started with 89 series, 17 of which were caught up. I finished one series, which was the original Bridgerton because I read The Duke and I, which was the only one I had not read before. I'd read the other seven. Then I started two, which two did I start? Oh, so I started the Young Huntress series by David Wiley and I started the, I think it's the Eternal Sisters of the Stars the by Lena Rother. The first book is Sisters of the Bass Black. I do remember that. So that brings my total series up to 90, but 18 are caught up because the second book for The Young Huntress is not out yet, though I am waiting for it. And that was a very fast recap of my stats for the month of April. So going into my writing wrap up, I did a lot of daydreaming, had a new shiny idea at the very end of the week for more of a memoir style, kind of talking with public health as well, because that's what the career I'm working with right now. Had that, just sat down and kind of started writing it, getting things thoughts out, kind of how I would frame it. I've never written a memoir before, so I'm kind of hoping that the Author to Writers Conference in July has somebody who talks about memoir because I'd really love to see, get some insight into that. So right now I'm just kind of, I, I read memoirs. I, I enjoy reading memoirs. So I'll kind of have like a flow of what I'd like to do. This is not like an all-encompassing project for me. It was a shiny idea. I've gotten something on paper and we'll see how it happens. This is this is the life of a pantser. You just write when you get that mood and things happen and sometimes they work out and sometimes you're like, oh, well, that was fun. <laughs> and for my other media, I, <laughs> I got into the Netflix series show from Japan old enough. So I have my dinner and I decided to watch a little bit of old enough because well, I've already watched it. This is my second helping, but this is a crazy show. <laughs> it's just cute to watch the little kids try to figure out or remember what their errand is. And sometimes you just need something sweet in your life. Also, this old enough show is super cute, which is about sending little children like four and under on errands for their parents and seeing how well they do. And it is adorable. I really, really liked it. Especially in that culture, it is normal to send your little child off to do this, to do these errands. And in that culture, it is safe and acceptable for the children to be learning independence at that age. And yeah, I'm gonna spoil it. So these are like 10 to 15 minutes stories. They're not long. I am going to spoil one. There was one where a girl was asked to pick up something and everybody in the community knew she was going on an errand. So they're all like, oh, hi, where, where are you going? And she's telling them and she walked right past where she was supposed to go and then got back to her mom and just bawled because she had not completed the task. And so mom, you know, so it's okay. You still did really good. And I tried to reward her and she's like not having it because she did not complete it. So mom's like, do you want to go back and finish it? And she's like, yeah. And so she went back and then she found it and she completed it. And then she got to come back to mom and be like, I did it. It's very, very sweet. If you just want something heartwarming and short to into your life, old enough, 
that is being aired on Netflix, go for it. My husband and I have actually decided to retire our Netflix because we typically don't watch that much from it. And so now that we're getting rid of it, I'm finding all these things that I want to try or things I'm like, oh, I'll try that one day. Now it's like, okay, no, I got to try it because <laughs> I don't know when we'll next pick it up. That's not true. I'll, I'll get Netflix again for the Great British Baking Show because that's my happy show. How has everybody's week been doing? I hope you all have been having a better week than me. Let me know. I'd love to hear, hear your stories. Thank you and have a great day.